Hi, welcome and welcome to our show. The nature here. Uh, our guest today is John Rakestraw, and today we're we're going to be talking uh, about bird feeding, four different kinds of bird feeders and food, and we're going to take a look at hygiene and uh, doing feeding of birds responsibly. John, yes. you brought some uh, material with you today. I did. I brought examples of several different feeders, some um, major types of feeders that people can put in their yards. Um, the simplest and the most traditional is what we call a hopper feeder. It's basically usually made of wood, sometimes out of recycled plastic. Um, fills from the top. You put your seed in there. Feeds out the bottom. All your little perching songbirds will use that. Um, feeders like this are primarily used for sunflower seeds, black oil sunflower seeds specifically. That gets your best variety of birds. All the birds that eat seed will eat sunflowers. So you can't go wrong with that. So w this one specifically is going to feed a lot of different birds? Um, yeah, all your perching songbirds, your chickadees, your finches, nuthatches, all your small songbirds that eat seed will come to something like this. And you can get these in all different sizes and configurations. I brought some small examples today so they fit on our table easily. Oh, you have bigger ones though. Huh? Yeah, you can get all different sizes. Um, and it's, it's all the same basic principle. You're just holding seed that feeds out the bottom. I have a friend who talks about squirrels and bird feeders. Is this designed so that uh, squirrels can't get into it? No. There's very few feeders that squirrels can't get into. Um, oh. If squirrels are an issue for you, um, some people don't mind feeding the squirrels too. If squirrels are an issue for you, you need to invest in a squirrel-proof feeder. And that's a, a bit more of an investment, but um, worth it if you're trying to save your seed for the birds. I see. They can get a little mm -hmm. off here. But so can everybody else. I don't know if you can see this, but the... Uh, there's a nice plate on the bottom that holds the uh, seed from getting down into the wood, and it's a beautiful uh, solid. And it has a screen seed. bottom for drainage and ventilation, so your oh. seed's not getting wet and soggy. That's an important consideration, especially in this part of the country. Oh, I see. It goes right through. goes right through. Excellent. Kay. Another great feeder for sunflowers is the tube feeder. Um, they come in, again, all shapes and sizes, too, but it's basically a polycarbonate tube metal feeding port so if a squirrel gets on it he's not going to destroy it mm -hmm. and what i like about the tube feeders is, is the uh, birds are perched on the outside so you can see them easily mm -hmm. um, they're basically indestructible you get a good one with a lifetime warranty and it's the last one you'll ever have to buy mm. so fairly easy to clean easy to see the birds you can add a tray to the bottom if you like you can add a dome to the top for weather protection if you like so it's very versatile feeder wow backyard uh, bird feeding is a, it's a it's a great way to enjoy wildlife uh, as well as, a, a, you know, an opportunity to help support the native bird species that are, of course, impacted by we being here. Uh, according to recent uh, census reports, over 65 million Americans, young and old, uh, do give birdwatching a try. I'm Ron Tellis. I'm a volunteer with the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife here on Sabi Island, uh, which is located northwest of Portland, Oregon. We have two bird feeders. Uh, they're located uh, just a few feet from our motorhome, and basically where they're set up is right out uh, the bedroom window. We attract, uh, oh, basically about four local birds. You have the red ringed blackbird, uh, the common house sparrow, and then the American goldfinch and grosbeak. We also uh, attract two of the doves, the morning dove and the collared dove. Uh, on occasion you'll see a yellow-headed blackbird um, and also the rufous-sided towhee or spotted towhee today. Um, and on occasion there'll be a, a little hawk that flies in and stirs up the whole bunch. We, uh, in the one feeder, uh, we have uh, sunflower seeds. And then in the, uh, for the finch, we have thistle seeds. It can get a little expensive. You buy it, uh, the sunflower seeds come in 40 pound bags. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't know how much they cost. My wife buys all the bird seed. And then the, uh, the thistle seed, oh, you replace that twice a day. Uh, 
And then the, the sunflower seeds, you can replace that also twice a day. Savi Island is a wildlife area, and mainly for uh, uh, the birds, ducks, geese. Uh, there's deer on the island, but uh, a lot of birds, thousands of birds, uh, including uh, bald eagles, uh, uh, certainly the ducks, the geese, and then you have uh, oh, sandhill cranes. So it uh, just offers, a, I am not an expert bird watcher, but uh, you do get hung up in trying to identify what shows up, to watch them scramble over the food, chase one another. Uh, the little fights tend to be between specific breeds. Uh, the house sparrows chase the house sparrows and the doves chase the doves. But uh, on occasion they'll get crossways with each other and a little house sparrow will chase a dove. But it's just interesting to see the interactions of all the birds. We've had uh, had as many as uh, 75 of the goldfinch on the ground uh, beneath the bird feeder. So they come in, in vast numbers. Well, we got here in, uh, in March, and this is our first year at this location, so it, uh, it's all a new experience to us. I think earlier we discussed, you know, why here, and uh, the bird feeders are just very near the motorhome. And mainly because uh, binoculars are expensive and you don't need one. Uh, they come right in and it's, uh, it's very enjoyable. I think that uh, uh, they become accustomed to you being coming and going. Now, if you get too close to the feeders, they all disperse. But uh, we've got some chairs and we can sit in those as long as we're not too close. And then you can take pictures. I've got probably several hundred pictures now of the birds as they come and go, but uh, with the advent now of the electric camera, you can take all the pictures you want, so uh, it's fun just to sit and relax and watch them and, like I say, see the interaction. Why do I like birds as opposed to the other animals? Well, I certainly like all the other animals, but uh, uh, we had a skunk show up one after or one evening. Uh, I don't know if I want to attract too many of those. Uh, you certainly don't want the deer here, but they do come. And uh, but the birds are easy to attract, and uh, they're non-threatening no matter what species shows up. Most of the mammals, those type of things, just will not come around as long as you're here. And uh, but the birds just offer a, a treasure trove of activity, colors numbers, the variety, be the only reason. I can't reject any animal, I mean, you'd like to see them all. But uh, as to attracting them, it's just much more easy to focus in on the birds, provide a place for them. And uh, we'll stick with that for a while, I think. My advice to prospective birders or anyone that might be interested is to certainly get a good book on birding so you can identify uh, the various species. It's easy to get confused. I thought I was looking at a spotted towhee for days and then it turns out it was uh, a gross beak. And I finally found that I was off guard, or when I was taken off guard, and that the female gross beak, uh, I couldn't identify her uh, when I thought she was a spotted towhee. So it uh, it just is very helpful. Get a good book and, you know, even join a group, go on walks uh, with groups and learn what you can. And uh, it's a good pastime and it's relaxing, non-threatening, just a fun way to go. Well, that was wonderful. That was nice. And that's right out of the Sylvie Island. Right. The man who obviously enjoys his feeders, and that's a, that's a simple way to do it. You just sit back and enjoy what comes to your feeder, and you don't need anything special. It's just a, a simple pleasure. John, what about that 
f uh, twice a day refilling the most people don't have that many birds so um he's he's in an unusual situation being out on a wildlife area like that but uh most people don't have to put out that much seed at one day. The nature here, folks, this is an extraordinary place to be birding. So please get out there and enjoy it. Uh, what about that photography? That's our very own producer, Ellie Cerrero, and she shoots all of that and- uh, She shoots all the video, yeah, it's beautiful. Oh, there's a uh, young dark-eyed junco and a chestnut-backed chickadee. Notice that feeder is a block of seeds held together with gelatin mm. so it's, rather than loose seed. It's a little more convenient way to do it. But I think that's a spotted towhee hiding behind the maple there. There he is. See the white spots on his back? Oh, yes. And they are agile enough to reach in there again. They are. That's the cylinder feeder. Yeah, there's a chickadee again. That looks like a black-capped chickadee. There's the dark-eyed junco adult, instead of that dark hood. Mm. Yeah, it looks like both an adult and a juvenile junco there. Yep, getting fed. The seed's right there, but it's better when mom gives it to him. Are they hospitable to each other, various breeds around? Uh... Generally, you'll see bickering. But um, as long as there's enough food, there's, they get along pretty well. Or they'll take turns. Sometimes if a larger bird is at the feeder, the little birds will stay on the background until the bigger one leaves, and then they'll all come in. Mm. Again, beautiful photography. Yeah. Okay. Again, the little one is standing on the seed, but uh, it prefers to be fed. Oh, I see that now. He's actually be is that a young one? Yeah, the one in front is that the stripy one is the young junco and uh, the parent has the dark hood. And assisting, yes. helping. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a black-headed grosbeak, very striking. I will bird. say I have never seen a bird like that before. And they get their name from their bills, a very thick bill it's designed for cracking open big seeds. Grosbeak. Oh, I see. There's the female, not quite as blatantly patterned, but still a beautiful bird. This, of course, is a, the reason to put bird feeders up. I don't think I've seen either of those birds, and these are native to the Portland yes. area. Yes, yeah, they nest in this area. You won't see them in the winter, but uh, they nest in this area. Extraordinary. And if you go walking in the woods, you can find these birds too, but it's a lot easier when they're right outside your door. There's a Stellar's Jay with the big crest. Extraordinary. I think that's the biggest thing about birding. I, uh, I'm looking at nature, and I didn't know that nature was that beautiful. Oh, yes. There's a great diversity of birds. <laughs> he has figured out gravities. All right. You notice he's uh, collecting a lot of seeds. He's storing them in his crop, that little pouch in his throat, and then he'll take them somewhere and hide them for later. That way, then, so if he runs into some bad weather, he's got a stash to take care of him through the bad weather. Truly, I didn't know that about birds. Jays especially will, will hide food, will store food for later. And many trees are dependent on jays taking their seeds and burying them, and that's how the tree is replanted. Oh my goodness. The things we need to learn about birds. Beautiful. I had never seen birds so... Isn't that beautiful? Do you keep binoculars or you must? I do. I have a binocular close by, um, but my feeders are about five feet from the window, so even without the glasses, I can see uh, see the birds pretty well. I'm going to be telling this story the rest of my life. <laughs> They're for you. That's what the feeders are for. Extraordinary.
Another type of feeder you might consider is a Niger feeder. It's sometimes called a thistle feeder, although the seed you put in here isn't actually related to thistles. It's a small black seed. It looks like a thistle seed, but it's actually Niger. It's a composite flower like a black-eyed Susan. It's grown in Africa and India as an oil crop. But um, Niger seeds are very attractive to goldfinches and pine siskins. Um, the other birds don't care for it as much, so if you really want to attract the little yellow goldfinches, this is a good way to go. Two main types of Niger feeder are the plastic tube, much like the sunflower feeder, but with very tiny holes. The, mm -hmm. the Niger seed is very small. They just pick it out one at a time. And the other way to go is a mesh, a steel mesh, so the birds just cling to the outside of the feeder and pull the seeds out through the mesh. Oh, they, their uh, beaks are small enough to probably just rattle them loose? Yes, uh, they can cling to the outside. Um, the goldfinches and siskins have very fine bills, and they can just pull a, a seed out through the mesh. How easily. do you open that, John? Again, both the tube feeders open from the top. Mm -hmm. So you just pour the seed in the top. And there's a, oh, that's a beautiful. Mm -hmm. And again, one. with these, you can add a tray to the bottom or a dome to the top if you wish. Wha it, it, this, uh, next to gardening, bird feeding is like the fastest growing hobby in America. It, it is. is. It's because of this, isn't it? I mean, these are amazing. Bird feeders have become much more sophisticated and easier to use over the past few decades. Um, it's, as you've mentioned, it's a growing hobby. So there's a, a lot of interest. Um, it's a huge market, actually. Um, hmm. Birders spend billions of dollars every year on their feeders and seed and such. So it's who a would think? who would think? But um, it's a uh, it's a f wonderful fun hobby, and uh, fairly easy to do. And there are a lot of tools out there that enable you to do it easily. There's a house finch eating a Niger seed from a sack, and there's an American goldfinch. Mm. The sacks are like that mesh feeder I showed you, just a nylon mesh instead of the steel. It works under the same principle. I see. There's the female American goldfinch, a little more sedate. Mm. Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. There's house finches and a goldfinch eating the Niger. So it's a, it's a bit like uh, if you build it, they will come. Very much so, yes. If you put out food in a safe area for them, they will find it eventually. But sometimes it takes a while. If you put up a new feeder, I tell people it takes anywhere from six minutes to six months for them to find it. Wow. But uh, once they do, they tell all their friends, and soon you've got a wonderful show like this. <laughs> they tell all their friends. It's amazing. Welcome back to the planet Earth, folks. Get, yes. get involved. Enjoy it while you're here. Mm. Are we looking at the back coloration? Is that That's the female. The darker bird is more olive green on the back. Mm -hmm. And the male is a bright yellow this time of year. In the winter, he will look much like she does now. There's the house finch. The male has a lot of uh, kind of a brick red color to the face and upper breast. The female is more of just a brown stripy bird. Just extraordinary. Now, these birds... Uh, they're fairly small, the ones we're looking at. Yes, they're a sparrow size, small sparrow size. The finches are quite tiny, actually. I'm getting the sense that we see birds coming and going. They're so small that unless we invite them to stop, right. we might not see the colors. That's very true. That's very true. If you provide a, a place with food that they're going to come back to repeatedly, you have just a much more opportunity to watch them. Looks like we're having a little political. There's a little tussle going on, and that's not unusual. But they usually work it out. Hmm. Another group I'd like to show you. And I'll put these, um, we'll just call these platform feeders. Basically, it's a tray. 
Um, this particular one is mesh, again, so the water can drain through and the seat can remain, uh, air circulation can go through it. Um, it's a flat tray. The advantage of something like this is you can use any type of seed you want. Um, the birds will come. They will pick out what they like. Mm -hmm. um, it's attractive to ground feeding birds like the juncos and sparrows and towhees, doves, mm. things like that that might have trouble on a little uh, sunflower feeder. Oh, I see. Um, so you can get large numbers of birds and larger birds like the jays, pigeons, mm -hmm. things like that if you want to feed the larger birds. So it's a very easy way to do it. It can be just a tray. This one has legs, so it just sits on the ground to get it out of the grass. There are hanging trays. There are what we call a fly-through feeder, which is basically a tray with a roof over it. And again, these come in all different sizes. You can get enormous ones. You get little cute little ones like this. It's all the same basic principle. It's a tray with a roof on it or a tray without a roof. Um, a roof isn't really necessary. Um, it's okay for seed to get wet. You don't want seed to stay wet. Mm. If the birds are eating, it, eating it within a few days, it doesn't matter if it gets rained on. If it sits wet for several days, it's going to start to mold, and you don't want that. There is a, a, a hygiene issue with bird feeding, isn't there? There is. Just like when you feed your children, you wash the silverware and you don't give them food that's moldy. You offer the same common courtesy to your birds. Make sure your feeders are clean. Scrub them every once in a while. A little dish soap and a scrub brush is all you need. Um, right. Make sure the seed you're feeding is fresh. If it sits out too long and gets wet, change it out so it doesn't get moldy. Mm. Does, this, uh, does this have an effect on bird populations if we're incorrect about feeding them? Uh, it can. Um, if feeders are not kept clean, you can spread diseases like salmonella among mm. the birds. Um, if the seed is allowed to mold, you can get fungal infections in the lungs and airways. So it can have a, po uh, a negative impact on right. your birds if you're not doing it right. Um, if you're feeding in a responsible way, it's a nice little boost for birds. They don't need it. Um, they've been around a lot longer than we have. But um, Having a reliable source of clean food does um, help them out, especially in bad weather. Mm. Yeah, uh, is there a need? I mean, why should we feed the birds? Um, the main reason to feed birds is to enjoy watching them. Oh. They, they've been around much longer than we have. They don't <laughs> need us. We like to think we're essential, but we're not. <laughs> um, you feed birds so you can enjoy watching them from the comfort of your home. Mm. Now, what about that? Our, our homes... Is it natural for a bird to come near a home? Is there anything you can do to make a home more attractive for birds to come? All animals need food, water, shelter, and space. So if you're offering at least some of those, the birds will take advantage of that. Mm. Food, easily enough. Um, water, a source of water is a nice addition to your yard. Um, cover, shelter, um, shrubs, trees, nesting boxes sometimes. Now, I imagine, John, uh, that folks, birding is an extraordinary environment, and y you might not be able to tell from the camera angle, this looks like wood. It's actually recycled plastic. That's recycled tell. plastic, yes. Yes, yeah, so uh, th the craftsmanship here at the table is extraordinary, and uh, it's just another sign about, uh, you know, the love that people give to birds and, and to the life of birding, I suppose. Uh, Someone told me that uh, we can double the number of bird species in our yard by providing a source of water. Water is very important, especially in this time of year, during the dry season. Um, a simple bird bath is fine. Shallow is better. You don't want to offer deep water. Birds want to wade, not swim. Oh, they so want to go into it. Yes, yeah, so they'll, they'll not only drink, but they also bathe. Um, clean feathers um, provide better insulation oh. and better protection for them. So shallow water... Um, kept clean again. Um, hose it out every couple of days so you don't get algae growing in it. You don't get uh, a lot of feces collected. So uh, fresh, clean water, just like fresh, clean food. Well, this is great. I mean, there's a sense that this is not a uh, tourism thing. You actually have a relationship with the birds in your neighborhood, and, and uh, you want to care for them like you do for your home. It's great, John. Uh, are there any safety concerns that people should be aware of when they're feeding birds? We've mentioned hygiene. That's probably the most important thing. Mm. Um, it doesn't, you don't have to be too meticulous about it, but um, just be aware of the condition of your feeders. If it starts to look a little grungy, it's time to clean it. Mm. Um, if you see sick birds at the feeder, um, that's an indication that something might be amiss. Um, if you see one sick bird, just give your feeders a clean and uh, 
It might just be a sick bird. If you see more than one sick bird, chances are you've got a problem. You should take your feeders down, clean them thoroughly, and maybe stop feeding for a week or so. Let your birds disperse so they're not concentrating, spreading diseases among each other. Right. And then put out fresh, clean seed. They'll come back. Oh, it'll give it a little gap so that they can gap. see that yeah. there's something going on. Let right. them disperse a little bit. It's very exciting. I imagine uh, I'm thinking of the binoculars that I want to get looking out the window and seeing that bird up close. Mm -hmm. Another um, consideration for safety is um, introduce predators, and by that I mean house cats. Um, you don't want to put a cat feeder in your yard. You want to feed the birds. So if neighborhood cats are roaming loose, um, be aware of where your feeders are placed. Cats hunt by sitting still and then pouncing. So mm. a bell around the neck does no good whatsoever. Mm. So you want the area under your feeder to be relatively clear so there's no place for a cat to hide. Oh. If you have to have your feeders close to a shrub or some ground cover, either erect like a knee-high fence between the shrub and the feeder, so there's a little barrier there that the cat would have to jump over. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, right. Space between the shrub and the feeder. You right. want space so that the birds can So the birds can, can see the cat coming. Wow. And another thing you can do to discourage cats is to take rose canes or blackberry canes, lay them flat on the ground under those shrubs where they like to hide so it's an uncomfortable place for the cats to be. Oh, my goodness. And they'll know. They'll, they'll, they'll figure that out, yeah. <laughs> Sharp eyes, these guys. Uh, what kind of... I think of when I see the bird feeders, you know, you mentioned the roofs for the feed. Mm -hmm. What kind of uh, shelters can we build for our backyard birds? Um, natural shelter is best. Um, shrubs... If you don't mind having a brush pile on the corner of your property, the birds love brush piles. Trees of various heights. Um, if, you have a if you have a large enough yard, uh, an area that you let grow up a little bit so it's a little brushier, mm -hmm. the birds really enjoy that. I'm kind of a pr procrastinator. I didn't know I was helping You're birds. helping things out by being lazy, <laughs> yeah. <laughs>